Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, That Creepy Reading, and before I start going into today's video, I'd like you guys to know for the first hour after this video is uploaded, I will be in the chat room TCR's Creepy Corner on the app simply known as Amino Horror. You can download it in the links below. Please, I really recommend this horror Amino Amino Horror thing. It is a really good app. With that being said, I decided to do this impromptu video because I've been working on my own uh, true story of a few things that happened to me and my family. Uh, as you guys all know, I absolutely love anything horror related, and I like things that are really paranormal in, in nature. I like the idea of ghosts, demons, and all that. So, you guys may be surprised, or not so surprised to hear, that I absolutely li love the idea of an Ouija board. Well, uh, Ouija or Ouija boards have this weird phenomenon going on right now. And a phenomenon that my mom and myself have also experienced. So, before I actually narrate the creepy pasta slash true story that I've been writing, I would like to give you guys a little bit of background on what's simply known as the entity of Zozo. Recently, I came to knowledge of what's known as the Zozo phenomenon. To start, I must tell what an Ouija board is. To those who really don't know, it's a children's toy with letters spelt out across a board. A person, or group, can put their hands on what's known as a plachette, and they can try to summon spirits. That's when the interesting comes in. Some claim that the spirit moves a plachette around a board spelling out sentences. Some claim it's each other doing it or doing the moving, which often tends to be the case. Others claim it's their subconscious, yet many believe it's actually spirits. I will not go into this. If you want to research, there is plenty of information out there. I just want to give you a little bit of background information before we cover the Zozo phenomenon. The Zozo phenomenon is the fact that people from all over the world for the last 30 years, the time the board became popular, have reported a entity named Zozo, Zoso, Zuzu, Zu, Zo, and other names that typically start with Z, but some even claim that the entity uses the name M-A-M-A -A or Mama, but others seem to think that Mama isn't the actual name, but rather an abbreviation for something. This creature often starts claiming it's another spirit, or tries to act friendly or nice. More often than not, Zozo quickly becomes violent, curses you out, and takes complete control of the board, oftentimes spelling any amount of obscenities that it can, or moving the plachette in ways that would be considered violent, hard ways for you to even keep up. For many, this is not the end of it. However, no matter how many boards they use, Zozo comes back. If you reportedly encounter Zozo, you're always going to have to deal with Zozo. Which is also the reason why I don't use, um, <laughs> uh, Uja boards anymore. It doesn't really end with the board. Many report hauntings by Zozo that claim possession, and others also claim harassment. It often carries a very common theme, however. Zozo either pretends to be friendly for a while, and then slowly drains away from the host. Or, he is outright hostile, terrifying poor souls who are unlucky enough to encounter him. Many have asked Zozo questions on his origins, on most occasions after revealing himself as Zozo. He'll not deny what he is, he'll right tell you that he is a demon from hell even claiming to be Satan himself on a few occasions. I don't necessarily believe that, but the possibility that he is a negative entity is very possible. Although this last part was probably one of his, well, many scare tactics, there's much evidence of ancient entities from Africa, medieval Europe, and Christianity for a demon named Zozo which its English translation translates to The Destroyer. Zozo has even been known to curse off in Hebrew and quote Bible verses, and he reacts in 
well, he reacts very negatively to anything about God, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Buddha, really bringing up any sort of positive religious figure will cause him to, well, become violent with his victims. Especially when commanded in the old Christian fashion. I do not know if this is common with other religions, but it never really works no matter what type of deity you try to command it. In fact, it seems to just piss it off, and the best thing you can usually do is end the game as quickly as humanly possible. I am trying to write this or really make this into a video as a way of informing my fellow audience and creepypasta readers that this isn't, it's not quite as everything seems. If you happen to use one of these boards or an automatic writer and anything or something by the name of Zozo appears, leave the game properly and try to cleanse your house through any means necessary. Now, I should let you know that googling the name Zozo brings up a number of websites and message boards posting where people discuss their true experiences with this being. I have actually have a short list of these exact websites in the description right now, so if you're interested in reading more about this alleged demon, I really do uh, encourage that you inform yourself. So yeah, check the description. For this next part, I'm going to quickly just give you a few excerpts from a few different people on the subject matter, which is very nice and compelling in this nice little Zozo Phenomenon article I found at thecreepypasta.com. So with that being said, why don't we talk about some experiences from Tosa Okahama. I am Tosa Okahama. I'm currently 40 years old and I've held a fascination with the occult since an early age. I've, been, I've had many bizarre experiences with the Uja board, and I'm writing this as a warning to people that bad things can happen. Because of these portals, the majority of people from the United States have this skeptical view regarding scientific evidence for the Uja board and many other spirits and ghosts. Many people who believe in these things also believe it is for this very reason that ghosts and poltergeists occur here and exist. Under the radar so to speak. I should mention that Uja boards are actually just toys that people use. And the fact is, an Uja board by itself is nothing. But when you're open-minded enough and you happen to have a specific energy to yourself, these things can act as a conduit because you're openly inviting other spirits into your home. And it's this invitation that attracts spirits to the board, not some, because of some religious thing, but rather it's the invitation and not the board itself. The board only acts as a way for the spirit to interact with you. Nothing more, nothing less. These toys, let me tell you by first hand, should be used with strict caution and probably should not be messed with at all. Other countries take a more open-minded view of spirits, demons, and ghosts, and many cultures have based their entire religions based off these beliefs. During my experiences with Uja boards, one particular spirit always seemed to be compelled to make its presence known. Its name is Zozo. Today I refuse to even pronounce his name as I believe its mere pronunciation can cause the demon to manifest itself. Too many times to count, it has had first pretended to be a nice spirit, or pretended to be whomever I was trying to contact. But eventually, it showed itself, cussing at me, threatening me, and others present in the room. Once, it actually cussed at me, using what looked like Latin or Hebrew, and using some type of biblical terminology. It used the word nasty spirit. I was genuinely fascinated and startled by how many times Zozo showed up to many different events in many different states and many different Uja boards and people. It always wound up being a very nasty being and commented freely about how it wanted to possess my girlfriend and then take them to a paradise. When, it asked, when I asked where paradise was, it just spelt hell. One time, after Zozo was being extremely malevolent with me, 
I walked into my bathroom, only to see my one-year-old daughter about to drown. Her mother had left her alone in the tub just for a second, and somehow the water got turned on and was overflowing. Instinctively, her face had tilted up and was seconds from going under the water when I grabbed her from it. The next day, she was hospitalized for some weird internal infection and was put up in isolation for 14 days straight at doctors tried to diagnose the Ill illness. We almost had lost her, and that's when I suspect a demon attack. At the same time, my girlfriend maintained a trance-like state. Her personality changed from a very sweet person to a withdrawn and uncaring person. Zozo said that before it was going to possess her and eat her soul. I was recording music for a future rock project, and I remember jokingly asked if it had an opinion on what I should name the band. It spelt Iron Tongue, which, at the time, I thought was pretty cool. Only later, when my daughter's tongue swelled up in the hospital to the point of asphyxiation, did I realize that it wasn't cool at all. Her tongue became rock hard and distorted her face, swelling up where it hung grotesquely from her mouth. We took turns besides the hospital for what seemed like forever before my daughter began to recover from this strange affliction that to this day remains undiagnosed. When guests would spend a night at our house, they would claim that they were hearing frightening voices coming from inside the walls. Objects would be thrown around the room, and spiders seemed to come from nowhere. My girlfriend's brother, who lived with us, complained that he couldn't sleep at night because the conversations we were having were so loud that he could not rest. He believed in ghosts, and though he wasn't afraid of them, he said this definitely felt demonic. Lights would turn off by themselves, doors would open and unlock themselves, and one night in our bedroom, vicious laughter emanated from thin air, and to this day I cannot explain the terror in that laughter. Another night, I was awakened by what felt like hands on my throat choking me. I could not breathe, I could not scream. After 30 seconds, it released its grip and I grasped for air. The same thing happened to my girlfriend the next night. The family curse. Yet another night, her brother and I were standing just outside the back porch sliding glass door, talking about what's supposed to be a curse of their family. I abruptly exclaimed, I rebuke this curse in the name of Jesus Christ. I no sooner finished saying those exact words when a deafening sound and a vibration struck the entire house and such an alarming boom that the neighbors came over to ask if, they heard, if I heard something strange. I knew it wasn't our imaginations. I got to the ladder to see what ha landed on top of the house, only to find nothing. Things settled down after that, and to this day, I believe whatever made that noise also caused a disturbance to go away. For a while, my girlfriend broke up with me, and I met someone online in Michigan, where I moved up to be with her. She didn't believe in spirits, and although I knew better, I decided to make her a believer as well. The Skull Necklace Living in a very small town in Marshall, Michigan, there were no stories that sold Uja boards, so I downloaded one from the internet printed it out, and to my horror, Zozo returned. It's said to be from, and I quote, cyberspace, and when I asked where it had lived, it spelt skull necklace. We didn't think much of this until I asked again where it was. This time, it spelt mirror. There was only one small issue, and that was there was only one mirror in the bedroom where we were crouched on the floor, and I heard a scream coming from my girlfriend's seven-year-old niece, who was also watching with us. With another friend, we looked at the mirror and we saw a skull necklace swaying back and forth with glowing eyes looking down at us. My girlfriend's son had hung the necklace on one of the posts of the waterbed for hours before I downloaded the paper board. We almost jumped out of our skin, and although three feet of fresh snow had fallen that night, we found ourselves in front of the yard, not knowing what to do, scared and frozen in terror. My girlfriend was so fascinated, she drove 40 miles to purchase a new glow-in-the-dark Uja board, much to my dismay. 
The next night, we had another session in the same room. Zozo immediately came forth, even without me being a participant. My girlfriends and nieces were using the planchette, and I would have secretly write down a color onto a small piece of paper, then crumple it up where no one could see it. I asked the young girls to ask the board if it knew which color I'd written down. It quickly scooted yes, then blue. I remember chills coursing up my spine. I threw the wa wadded up paper to my girlfriend. Her eyes widened and read the color blue. We tried the same thing with shapes, words, and every time the board knew. The next part I'm going to entitle the photo apparition. One night we asked the board if it would show itself. It spelt yes and told me to turn out the lights and take a picture of the necklace above the board. I did just that, and what turned out to be so eerie to say the least is that on the upper left hand of the corner of the picture, we could plainly see winged skeletons flying about, and they are the exact same weird shape as the skateboard skeleton on the necklace. Towards the middle, I could make out hideous faces. I have even seen at least four evil faces in this picture. I have sent this picture to several experts, and they all cannot explain the images inside. As if this all wasn't strange enough, now comes the really scary part. A few months ago, I googled the word Zozo. To my shock, many other people have been contacted by this demon, by the same name. I've read 20 similar stories. I am now convinced that this simply cannot be mere coincidence. Supposedly, Zozo is an ancient demon name, which probably stands for the Destroyer, and claims demonic possessions are associated with this Zozo, and I feel it's my duty to warn people to steer clear from this if it happens to present itself during an Uja board session. I'm currently researching this phenomena for a future book, and I am in the initial stages of presenting my findings to a reputable demonologist who has been involved in hundreds of cases of paranormal activities across the world, including the haunting in Connecticut. Who or what is Zozo, you ask? Zozo supposedly is a three-headed dog demon that guards the gates of hell. He has a tattoo on his forehead that spells out Zozo. Also, Zozo is a term Aleister Crowley claimed met 666. Jimmy Page of the rock group Led Zeppelin also used Zozo as a symbol on the Zeppelin 4 album. Could Zozo and Zozo be connected somehow? How can many different people from so many different parts of the world somehow lie about the same Zozo spirit? And if they aren't lying, how could we explain these visitations by this wicked entity? Is Zozo the devil himself, or a wayward demon who has the power to manifest itself wherever and whenever it's called or openly invited? Listen to my warning, people. If you are playing around with an Uja board, and you jokingly ask if it has a name, and it spells out Zozo, or Zozo, or Mama, close the session properly, cleanse the house, and I repeat, never. And I must repeat again, ever ask it again. And if you're brave enough to carry on conversations with the spirit, do not antagonize it or act on its di di directions. I know what I have seen, and I know what other people have came into contact with. It is dangerous beyond words. I realize that not every recession results in negativity, but when you are playing with Zozo, you're playing with fire. Everything I've described here is true, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. It may take me years, but I do intend on writing this book about it, as I have many more stories that I do not have time to mention here. They all stem from true events that took place while talking with the Zozo entity. Folks, I have been told by people wiser than myself that spirits or the spirit world is more real than this one. Oh, Uja boards can cause many bad things to happen in your life. Maintain an open mind, and most of all, be careful. Before I end this little video, I would like to mention a few other stories about Zozo, so you kind of understand his abilities and what he's been able to do in the past. 
Now, as we heard from the last story, he's able to cause physical afflictions and apparently has even caused some demonic, the well, possessions. But Zozo has done much more than that, including predicted deaths of over three people in recorded instances. In one situation, Zozo actually reported the death of someone who is playing in a session. In fact, it's predicted three. During one session, one person asked Zozo when he would die. He simply said, alone and hurt. That week, he got into a car accident, impaled by a nearby tree. He bled out to death throughout the entire night, cold and alone. The other person who asked it when it would die simply spoke murder. He was then murdered by an unknown assailant and to this day we don't know who actually murdered him. The only thing we do know is that he was murdered and it was a cause of foul play. He was stabbed several times with a knife, in fact a rather large one, which was recovered but no fingerprints were found. Zozo, if you ask it when you're gonna die, will predict a unnatural death that will most likely come true. So, when you're dealing with this entity, be careful. There are over 30,000 reported cases of Zozo appearing during these sessions, and many other people have similar stories. And, on Wednesday, or rather, tomorrow, there will be a new story from me talking about my experiences with Zozo himself, including one experience that happened to my mom while I was still a child. So with that being said, this is your host, That Creepy Reading, signing off. If you want to support stories like this, simply go on Patreon and donate anywhere from a dollar to ten. Any little bit helps. If you want to send a one-time donation, I'll narrate any story you ask of me as long as it has a copyright clause that allows me to narrate it for commercial purposes. With that being said, you can also share or like or subscribe to help the channel out more. This has been your host at Creepy Reading, signing off. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.